for my life. So I really appreciate, um, and I would love for you to, um, to um, welcome and um, um, be ready. And uh, we have Mr. Taioni for my life. Bye. So I really appreciate, um, and I would love for you to, um, to um, welcome. So Taioni, we're ready whenever you are. If you could, okay. Oh, I'm glad to see you, and I'm, I'm just we're excited to see you, and it's it's good to, to be with you today. Okay, let's pray. Otua ko mau tamai, pakpeta ihe, hoa ko en, ketu kupe lang langi kiho ofio. Kokoyakwaout, <laughs> Eki koi lo tuia ke ke sai ta pe kina koro kalaman pe a hoko ia ko hamea ke tupule kina ia poto mo ilo a fa nau o nau ha u ke nau feina ke nau ma u ha mo ui ke ka ha u koi lo tu eki ke sai ta pe kina ka utak ko to a pe o i polo kalama pe tu pe ke hoko a polo kalama ko ini ko hamea ia ke ne langa ia e nau mo ui ki ha tu unga e hopa e gnau tolu ko ka kai ke falala anga i hinga hinga u ko tofi tataki e gnau tolu pe tu pe e ki ke te ko ke tataki e polo kalama ko ni ke lava ke hopo ia ko ta pua ka ke ngata ki he fonua pe ke siasi ko ia e ke tu ga ia lo tu mama he he ho ko ko ni ke sai ta pe ki na mai a polo kalamani na tolu ko to ka utaki ma lo tu ke sai hon ta po kina aki na tolu tamai e alo fo mai pe ka ta po kina a nga u ko to be sai he ka utanga ta ko ka fu fin o polo kalamba ko e ko ya be a lo tu mo hu i hu a fa christ ko alo ka ko ma u fa mo u e men malo Malo, malo. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, Tyone, for coming and uh, giving us these blessings uh, today. We really appreciate your, your blessings and, and really appreciate you um, always praying over us. Um, I believe since 2013, you've been um, saying these blessings over our students and over us. And, and, um, and I take those very seriously over my life. Um, you have said those blessings um, over me since 2013, and um, and I really appreciate all the blessings you have. Um, I take that very personal that you've prayed over my life, um, me as a student, um, and um, I thank you for for that. I, I also want to step in and just say thank you very much, Papa Tayone, for um, for all that you've done for us, and a special prayer and blessing to Makaleta. Um, who has been um, a staple in our program as well. And even though she is not here physically with us, she is still here with us um, throughout all we do because she is the fabric of what we do in, in this. So thank you to um, the Tayone family and particularly Sena for um, introducing her mother and father to us um, and helping us move through our programming. So. Again, thank you for being here. So um, thank you again for being here. Um, uh, my name is Alfred Herrera. I'm, I'm the Assistant Dean uh, for Academic Partnerships and I direct the Center for Community College Partnerships. I am a first gen um, student, come from a low income background, a Chicano, Mexican American. And I've been working at UCLA for longer than many of you have been alive, but for a very, very long time and all focused on transfer and uh, social justice issues. This 
webinar is um, one of our uh, critical um, webinars and ways that we can connect with different communities. So we're hoping that um, your participation here today will allow us to help you in your transition from community college uh, to a university or from high school to the community college and then to university. Essentially, what we're really trying to do is to provide um, information for you that will help you on your journey through the educational world um, that we live in. And so we want you to ask a lot of questions. We want you to get connected with people. We want to be a resource for you. So um, please make sure that you reach out to us. You'll have throughout the day information from a variety of people. You'll have um, you'll get information on uh, names and emails and so on and so forth, websites. So um, again, we're just here to provide whatever support we can for you um, to ensure that you reach the goals that you've set for yourself, um, whatever those may be. So welcome um, and thank you for joining us. Next slide. So again, um, everyone, um, we want you to go ahead and to meet the committee that has been able to put this together. So um, again, my name is Donald Salcedo. Um, I, um, I did the program back in um, 2016 as a student. And then in 2017, I transferred into UCLA. And then I was a peer mentor for uh, two years, um, two or three years um, while I was at UCLA and um, now continuing to still help and being a part of the planning committee. So I'd love for um, others to go ahead and um, introduce themselves. Somebody that's not here, I'm gonna introduce them first, is um, Clementine Bardot. She's a um, UCLA PhD student. Um, she's out doing some research right now and she could not be here. But um, Asena, we'll come over to you. All right, thank you, Donnie. Hi everyone, Malalele. I am Asena Tainifilihia, and um, I would like to first start with the fact that I'm hosted here in um, the land of the Tongva, um, particularly Pomona. I'm, I'm zooming to you all from Pomona. Um, I am and was a community college student as well. I went to LA Valley College um, and I graduated from Cal State Northridge um, and uh, did my graduate work at UCLA and currently pursuing a PhD in cultural studies at Claremont Graduate University. And I'm really excited uh, to have been a part of the planning committee to be invited back as part of the, the planning committee for this year's MPI. And just want to give um, a quick shout out and thanks to um, everyone that has been um, pulling together all the behind the scenes um, work. Um, to bring this um, this webinar um, to fruition. So very happy to be back um, and to support the work that you all are doing for transfers. And I'll go ahead and hand off to Shannon. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, introduce Shannon Zarula. Um, Shannon um, um, also is a transfer student from um, Al Camino and Compton College. Um, and she um, transferred in with me as well. And we um, were able to do the program together. And then we became co-coordinators for the MPI program um, for the last two years, um, almost and along with our counterpart, um, EC2 Afua, who's not here. And so all three of us um, really worked really hard um, the last few years um, with MPI while we were at school. So it's, it was so great to work with Shannon um, this year. Um, on um, this planning committee and we worked last year on the last planning committee. Next slide. Uh, Dr. Teresa Ombo. Hi everybody. It's really lovely to see so many people log in for this gathering. Um, I'm Dr. Teresa Ombo. I'm a three-time Bruin. I graduated from UCLA in 2007, 2013, and 2017. Um, last with my doctorate in education. And now I'm an assistant professor at UC San Diego in the Department of Education Studies. Um, UCLA is, I love UCLA. Um, I can't say enough great things about it. Um, and one of the things I'll say about it is located on 
my community's ancestral unceded home territory. And so I always share with people, I'm Tongva, Luceno, and Tonatham. And so I not only am I a Bruin through and through, but I am indigenous to the LA Basin and Southern California, uh, where UCLA is currently occupying our land. Um, I, you'll hear more from me later um, in the second part of the session. And so I just want to thank you all for coming. Um, it's really lovely to see your squares um, and uh, thank the committee for all their hard work putting this together. And then is Lydia on? If Lydia's not on, then I will pass it to, oh, there you are, sis. I'm going to pass it to Lydia. Thank you, sis. Uh, good morning, almost afternoon, uh, community. I am excited to be here. I am currently tuning in from Duwamish territory. Uh, excuse me while I turn off my camera every now and then. Um, I'd like to acknowledge the relationship between the Native Hawaiian Pacific Islanders and our indigenous people um, here in the Pacific Northwest. And that means standing in solidarity with a lot of the issues that affect everybody and impact everybody. Um, I am excited to be here. I transferred in 2012 from San Bernardino Valley College to UCLA in the American Indian Studies Department, finishing up, finishing up some things in the grad studies for my American Indian Studies Department. Um, I have worked with Alfred and our team since I believe 2013. Um, and I'm excited to be here as this program is very important to our um, communities. Um, and it is a game changer for a lot of us um, who come from specific backgrounds. And I am currently a commissioner on the Washington State Commission on Asian Pacific Affairs, deal with a lot of policy around that. I will be running, I'm planning on running for office. Um, I'm also a Matai uh, in Samoa. And I am just excited to be here to hear um, all of the wonderful guest speakers, especially my um, mentors and advisor, my dear sister, Teresa Ambo, Renee Whiteyes, who you will hear from later, um, but also Julianne Onessi, who will be opening up um, our ceremony today. So thank you very much for having me and I'm going to pass it on to Jewel Warren. Thank you. You're muted, Jewel. Thank you. Doing too much. <laughs> um, I had a whole a whole spiel that I just went over. But um, good morning, good afternoon, greetings to everyone in the space. Thank you for joining us today for this really important webinar. Um, it's a privilege and a pleasure to be with you all and to share in space and community with you all. My name is Jewel Bourne. I am one of the program coordinators here at the Center for Community College Partnerships. I specifically oversee our partnership with Los Angeles Valley College, so go Monarchs. Um, and I am also the one of the communications co-coordinators which is just a fancy way of saying I help facilitate our social media presence. Um, I am a first generation college student, first in my family to go on and get a master's degree, first in my family to be um, to even even consider college as an option. Um, daughter of immigrants from Guyana, South America, and I was I am a transfer student to UC, was a transfer student to UCLA from Santa Monica College. Um, was a CCP scholar participating in our STP program, which is our African American Black programming that we do every year. And for the last ten years, I have been involved in the work that is being done at the center um, as a scholar as a peer advisor when I transferred to UCLA and as a full-time staff member. Um, I am currently a second year doctoral student, PhD student at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign, working on my working on my doctorate degree to continue to work with transfer students and to make sure that historically excluded minoritized populations, particularly transfer students, um, are, 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 are having access to higher education in the ways that are most culturally affirming. So it is a privilege and a pleasure to be with you all. And thank you for allowing me to be a part of this space. Um, it's been an honor to be a part of the planning committee this year and to learn from each and every one of the folks. Um, so I will go ahead and turn it over to our full-time staff members. Um, you've met Alfred, so I don't know if Alfred wanted to say anything additional. No, I just wanted to say again, um, thank you. And uh, we'll have our staff uh, do very brief introductions. Next slide. Beto. To your space. My name is Alberto Moreno. Feel free to call me Beto for short. Uh, um, I oversee our partnership with Los Angeles Pierce College. So shout out to any Brahmas in the room. Um, thank you to the committee for putting this event together. And I'll be here around as a resource um, if you have any questions about transfer. 
Thank you. I'm just going in the way that I see the screen. Perla, I don't know if Perla's not here. Perla oversees our LA City and LA Harbor partnership. Nothing. Good morning, everyone. My name is Claudia Salcedo, and I'm the CCCP Administrative Coordinator, and I've been with the center for the last 10 years, and I think you also wanted us to mention our hometown. I am a Chicana from the Coachella Valley. Thank you. Ariel. Good morning, everybody. My name is Ariel. My pronouns are she, her, hers. Um, I am here on occupied Tongvin land. I am, my hometown is in Arcadia. I'm here in Arcadia. Um, I'm the program coordinator for CCCP at um, West Los Angeles College and LA Southwest College. Um, transferred from PCC and working back here um, as full-time staff and just welcome to your space. Thank you, Gabby. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. Thank you for taking the time and being here today. My name is Gabriela Abraham, and I work for CCCP as a program representative. I'm very excited to be here in community with you. I transferred from Los Angeles Valley College and graduated in, with the Spanish Community and Culture and Chicano Studies in 2017 from UCLA. Welcome all. Thank you, Blanca. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to this space and community. Uh, my name is Blanca Cantera Hershey. I'm the office coordinator as well as the communications co coordinator. Um, I transferred from Santa Monica College to um, UCLA and graduated in 2014. Greetings from the beautiful Sonoran Desert. Um, and um, I, my hometown is uh, Mexico City. And welcome you all to once again to this wonderful community. Thank you, Frank. Uh, thank you, Alfred. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to uh, this awesome webinar. My name is Frank Casarena Jr. I am a program coordinator here for the Center for Community College Partnerships, and I oversee the partnerships between Los Angeles Mission College and Los Angeles Trade College. My hometown is Huntington Park. Uh, I transferred from ELAC and ended up getting my master's at the other school. Uh, welcome once again. Thank you. We don't believe Santi's here, but Santi is our assistant director, and Chelly is not here as well. Chelly is a transfer student from Santa Barbara and now a coordin our coordinator for the East LA Partnership in Aurelia. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the webinar. Um, my name is Aurelia Reimer. I'm the STEM program coordinator. Um, I am from Whittier, California, but I currently reside in South Los Angeles. I transferred from Santa Monica College to UCLA as an anthropology major, and I am back as a STEM program coordinator. So welcome, everyone. And the other person you see on the screen is Cinnamon Mantley, who uh, unfortunately and fortunately just left us recently to start law school. Cinnamon was our Pasadena City College coordinator, also transferred from there, and we wish her well. Thank you. Next slide. All right, so I will be reading the land acknowledgement. The Center for Community College Partnerships at UCLA acknowledged the Tongva people as the traditional land caretakers of the Los Angeles Basin and Southern Channel Islands, and are grateful to have the opportunity to work for the indigenous peoples in this place. As a land grant institution, we pay our respects to ancestors, elders, and our relatives' relations, past, present, and emerging. Welcome everyone, so happy to share space um, and community with you all. I will be reading um, CCCP's Black Lives Matter statement. Um, before I read the statement, I do wanna give a trigger warning in case any of this material may be triggering to you, please take time for yourself to step away, take a breather. Um, it's really important for your overall well-being. So uh, I will now be reading the statement. To our students and colleagues in the black community and across the diaspora, we stand with you. You are valued and an important member of our, of our campus and off-campus family. We all need to acknowledge the challenges and work to change them. We must work together as people of color and allies, people who are concerned about our future to eliminate these systematic disparities. We take a stand today and always because Black Lives Matter. Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm going to be taking the time to read 
CCCP's statement in solidarity with the APIDA community. So this is to encourage stop stopping AAPI hate. CCCP condemns hateful acts of violence, harassment, and rhetoric targeting Asian Americans, Pacific Islander, and Desi Americans. Since the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic, there has been an alarming increase in the discrimination and violence perpetrated on the APIDA community. These acts of violence are nothing new. We are disturbed by these xenophobic, racially motivated attacks. CCCP stands in solidarity with all of our students, colleagues, and community partners who experience marginalization and threat. Thank you. Hello again. We just wanted to go ahead and, and um, talk about, and this is our information on COVID-19. So um, in terms of the pandemic impact, the death rate for Latino people is 21% and for Black people is 9% higher than the state average and people of color in general um, and communities of color. Uh, the case rate for communities with medium income, <clears throat> less than 40, 40 excuse me, 40,000 is 37% higher than statewide. Community college students have had the largest negative impact, particularly men of color who have experienced the largest enrollment drops. And some information about UCLA's plan to return to campus for fall 2001, close to 80% of courses will be offered in person as well as most labs. UC will require anyone accessing UC facilities or in-person UC programs to be fully vaccinated prior to the fall term. And UCLA is planning for on-campus housing this fall and expects to offer uh, housing to first-year transfers and a higher percent of second-year transfer students. Uh, so just a note, um, as of July 17th, Los Angeles has mandated masks into effect. Hello everyone. So tribal critical race theory. Um, this program, um, the um, MPI program really um, grounds itself in tribal critical race theory. What makes tribal critical race theory and um, critical race theory a little different. It's, it talks about um, addressing the issues of the indigenous people in the United States as a, as a um, political entity and not as a racial group. There is um, nine tenets of tribal, um, uh, tribal crit critical race theory. And um, this theorist um, is that came up with this is um, by the name of Dr. Brian Brayboy. So um, it just talks about the complex, like complex relationships between the United States um, and the American Indians within the United States and um, how we work with the federal government and our lens and things like that. Next slide. Also, uh, community cultural wealth. So we talk about community cultural wealth and um, these articles are being placed, I believe, in the um, chat, if you would like. Um, so um, community cultural wealth talks about the, um, the wealth that we come in um, to the um, institution with um, from our families, from our, from social, from um, our communities, from our um, our um, home languages and how we navigate these systems and how we resist um, and move forward. So um, both of these articles are in um, the chat, I believe, and they're in the drive. So um, please be sure to check those out. Hi, everybody. So we're gonna be going over the community guidelines um, and kind of some of the things, uh, some of the things that we could practice uh, during the webinar. Um, some of them are respect the cyber community. Um, please keep your microphone muted and click on speak on speaker view. Um, if you have questions throughout the presentation, feel free to utilize the chat feature. Um, know that the questions will be answered during the Q and A portion. Uh, step in, step back. Um, one diva, one mic. So. Some of these are kind of like, make sure that you give space um, for people to speak, make sure that you challenge the ideas, not the messenger, um, and do not be afraid to ask. Um, let's be respectful as we share some opinions, some ideas, and be mindful that um, some students or some of us here might not understand some terms and um, kind of understanding the language that we use when we communicate with one another.
Hi everyone. Um, just an overview for today's agenda. Um, we just completed um, the first quarter, which is our welcome, blessing, and introduction. And now we're going to transition to our keynote speaker, um, Dr. Julianne Annesi. Um, and from 12 to 12.45 p.m., there will be a break and bringing out to our community circles. And then we'll begin the second session, which will begin from 12.45 to 1.30, where, where there's an excellent student alumni panel where you just come as you are and let's, let's fellowship in this gathering. And finally, we would um, um, end with our amazing keynote speaker, um, Renee White Eyes. Um, and concluding at 2 p.m. Thank you. And I have um, the esteemed pleasure um, and privilege to introduce to you our keynote speaker for today, uh, Dr. Julian Anessi. And before I introduce her, I just want to share uh, briefly, um, when I thought about applying to grad school, um, Julianne and Dr. Keith Camacho were both, um, Dr. Julianne Anissi and Dr. Keith Camacho were offering space for students, um, PISA students. And that's actually where I came to meet uh, many Native and PI students um, that were um, at UCLA at the time. And I'm very grateful uh, for the support and the community, um, Dr. Julianne Anissi, that you've created. I not only applied and was able to go there, but I was also able to work um, alongside of both um, Dr. Julianne Anissi and Dr. Keith Camacho. Um, so it is, uh, again, a privilege to be able to introduce you um, into the space to share um, some of the work, uh, the scholarly work that you are doing uh, currently, and just um, super grateful, again, Dr. Juliana Nessie for your support and mentorship over the years. Um, so Dr. Juliana Nessie is an assistant professor of gender studies at the University of California, Los Angeles. Her research interests include disability and indigeneity, educational policies, and decolonial feminisms. As a community educator and activist, she has also worked with nonprofit organizations and schools in American Samoa, California, Hawaii, New York, and Samoa. Julianne is currently at work on a book manuscript, Tautua Women's Activism and Disability Advocacy in Samoa. Again, um, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Juliana Nessi, for joining us this morning. And I'll go ahead and hand over the mic to you. Good morning, everybody, or good afternoon. Thank you, Senna, for that beautiful introduction. Um, and I just want to also add my um, congratulations, but also welcome to all our transfer students or potential students, uh, potential Bruins. So thank you, everybody, for sharing this space. Um, so. I want to just briefly add also to our land acknowledgement, and this is something beautiful that I also learned from uh, Michi Saki Nishabe, uh, scholar Leanne Simpson, who um, in one of her talks, um, she's a writer and artist, suggested that we also talk about um, sort of people and stewards of the place where we're from. So I am. Um, also um, at uh, Tongwa in a Tongwa and Gabrielino uh, space um, here in Los, Ange Los Angeles Basin. I just want to acknowledge um, those the stewards and caretakers as well. And also, I just want to acknowledge um, folks that we worked with over the years uh, um, uh, from the this, this space where we gather. And I want to give a shout out to our elders like Cindy Alvitre, Craig Torres, as well as Desiree Martinez, who are, have um, their and many other folks, but uh, these particular folks we have worked with over the years. I, um, I also just want to point you, um, if you're not familiar, with the area um, to the Corvana Springs, which is a sacred place. And I know a lot of our students at UCLA have volunteered uh, there in cleanup, as well as just fellowship with uh, the caretakers of that space. And that's um, the Corvana Springs is um, where the University High School campus is now 
uh, locate it. So that's very important. It was there before the high school. Um, and then lastly, I just want to give out a shout out to our scholars, right? I want to acknowledge Teresa Stewart Ambo, who is on our call today, um, and uh, who is now at UC San Diego, um, and also Charles Sepulveda, who is at University of Utah. Um, and they are both Bruins. So um, go Bruins. And um, so yeah, so that's what I want to add to acknowledgement here. And then um, finally, I just want to say thank you, Alfred, um, and the CCCP uh, staff for putting this together. You know, we all know as community activists and, and educators that any sort of events involves a lot of labor, um, work, as well as frustration and just organization. So I just want to say Faftai, thank you so much. For that. So I'm going to launch into my slide real quick. And is, is it possible for me to share my um, my slide with y'all? Am I, can I do that? Yes, you should be able to, your are Um. So, and then before I start, can y'all all hear me? Um, all right. So. Yeah. So a little bit what I'll be talking about today. So this is a quote, it's, a, it's change, that's you, boo. So this is from my high school. I work a lot with high school students, uh, very sassy high school students and witty. So this is from one of them who, when we were talking about social justice um, and work that we do in our communities, um, you know, it, it's such a succinct, but also very direct um, quote here. Um, so my, what I wanna talk to you about today is, is you know, I think, there's nothing, I think I'm preaching to the choir first off, <laughs> um, but I, I think these are just reminders, right? And I think there are also more reminders, but also examples that I wanna share with you. Um, and this is where talking story and, and storytelling and telling um, our community stories, I think brings us together, right? And, and, and asking questions that are both complex and uncomfortable at times but you know it, this is this is the, the 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 kind of community building and solidarity building that we we do so i just want to start off with what's in a name right and this is my way of introducing myself um my name is julianne as you see it here takanimani carter and nancy um, I was named after my two nanas um, named Julia and Marianne. Takanimani or Ne Takanimani is my, uh, means bird flying high. Um, I was named after my great aunt, um, and that is a name from the E. Kiribati Islands, where uh, my maternal ancestors are from. It's also another island group uh, in the Pacific. Uh, Carter is my mom's maiden name. That's my Palangi or white British great grandfather who hopped on a merchant ship at the age of 17 and sailed the Pacific. And that's where he met my great grandmother. Um, and then Anesi is my paternal surname. And that is was changed from Malai Fo. Uh, and um, there's a story there, which I'm not sure yet what, what that story is about, but these are all the little things and histories within our own communities and our own families that um, is also important to think about. Um, so I was raised in Samoa, lived in Los Angeles, moved here in the 1980s, uh, come from a very big island family, um, had three brothers, two sisters, uh, pretty much all the kinds of stories of big island villages and groups yes you know the, those are those are all things that are part of our culture that um sustain us and who we are um as well as thinking about our own communities and where we come from right and then i think more importantly since um, I've been here also understanding sort of our settler as well as our visit, visitor um, positionality in, in these spaces, right? So a little bit uh, about me, I am an assistant professor in the Department of Gender Studies. So any of you interested um, in this work around gender, around identities, around power structures, around Pacific studies, um, you know, feel free to reach out. There's lots of folks here who are excited about what they do. Um, I'm also affiliated with the Asian American Studies Department, as well as the 
American Indian Studies and the Disability Studies minor. So I kind of um, move around in these spaces. Um, and if you are interested, again, in interdisciplinary work, um, please reach out to any of us. Um, so in terms of my talk, I, I want to uh, start by just saying that um, these are just examples, right, of like the research work that a lot of us has done in the academy um, that combines both our community work as well as our research, right? So I think um, there's a way to, in, 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 at least in my repertoire, research and community work to me is the same thing, right? We, we do the work we do because we love our communities and we um, support our communities. And so research in that way can also be tweaked, right? To where it benefits our communities as opposed to sort of these long histories of, of um, excavation and oppression and uh, exploitations of our communities. Um, so I think I wanna start then by saying that this is about indigenous food futurity, right? And I want to borrow from Teresa and Wayne uh, a brief article here um, where they, you know, they're, they're sort of explaining these terms, but this is really about sort of a future, right? And how we can imagine this future or more in the specific context, how do we navigate the past, right? How do we navigate our canoe through sort of contemporary, but also historical, um, happenings here. So I, 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 I want us to just kind of think about these inquiries as an advocate, as an educator, um, and as a member of our community, right? And how do we, we sort of position ourselves in a place where we can also support, but also help and advocate for what our community needs are. Um, so a couple of things, you know, um, and this is what I want to share with you is just the work that I've been doing but also to kind of think about education. So I want to start off with education as a system in general, right? Um, and to think about, you know, this is also coming from the other readings that hopefully you had the chance to read over uh, with, um, you know, uh, Bon Sailua and of course, Asana, who's on our call, um, Tayone Filia's work, um, where they talk about settler education. So let's be, let's just put all these pillars out and foundations out. So we, we kind of know where we're starting, right? So settler education uh, really is about the perpetuating of dominant values uh, while also erasing the experiences of non-dominant communities. So when we think about our indigenous communities, we think about our AI, AI, AI communities um, in a much broader structure, we understand within this hierarchy where we are. So I just, you know, I, I think it's a really important kind of foundation here to, to understand what space we're coming into, right? So, um, you know, it's important to kind of think through uh, what education does, right? And education also is about white supremacy, right? It's about capitalism, it's about ableism, and it's about a system that breaks down and sort of erases what we know within our own communities and what we were raised with, right? Our beliefs, our values, our, our um, understandings and relations. You know, this is also about relations, our relations to people, um, animate, inanimate objects, you know, ecology, everything around us, right? So, so there's, there's discrepancies here, right? And there's gaps here. And this is where I, I wanna encourage you to kind of be in that space as a person who will be trained in a particular area. And this is where you come in, right? Your leadership within these spaces is where change could happen. So kind of going back to my my um, my robustious students here who change, that's you, boo. This is the point, right? That I want you to kind of think about also what you can contribute in these spaces through an education. So transferring to UCLA is, is a big transition. So we let's also name that, right? Um, but fortunately, a lot of uh, um, for you, you have folks like Alfred, the CCP team who do amazing work, right? You know, as, as a lot of the, the staff have, have, have related, a lot of them came through this program and, and, and are, are invested in also your success. So, um, so also keep that in mind. Um, 
you know, I also want to just highlight that, um, and you, and I'm sorry if I'm being redundant here, but, you know, less than 1% of the student population at UCLA um, are of Native and Pacific Island students. So I'm not sure if that's still a uh, valid uh, um, statistics, but we're not even 1%. <laughs> Okay, so let me just say that again. We're not even 1% of the student population. So if anything else, I hope that's a motivator for you to, um, to also consider pursuing higher education, despite its many sort of beefs and sort of structures in place, right? But I think if we understand what's happening and we find a good community to support you, this is where you can also make change and a, dif and a, and di a difference, right? So. On that note, I want to um, sort of shift a little bit here and sh and kind of think about um, the work that people have done. And I, you know, I, I want to start off with Teresia Taiwa, who was an amazing uh, scholar who we lost too soon. Um, and Teresia is, uh, is a e uh, Bonaba and, and Kitabas scholar and African American scholar um, out of the Wellington Uni uh, University of Wellington Vic, um, and her work was really around the uh, many things, but um, you know militarism, right? She she works does a lot of work around military and tourism in the Pacific, um, and this and I love this quote because I think it's it's so apt and it's also about the kind of relations that we have to each other. And this is where, you know, we can also build a kind of solidarity partnership with each other. And, 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 and I wanna show you the kind of work and give you an example of this kind of work that we do. But Teresia, you know, in her work says, you know, quote, we, we sweat and cry salt water so that the ocean is really in our blood. You know, and, and this is about the kind of relations that um, folks in the Pacific have to each other and to and to other living things besides humans around us. So in terms of work, I want to share a little bit about a project that I've been working on with um, professors Mashana Goman, Maylee Blackwell, um, and then I think Keith Camacho briefly sort of was one of the founding folks that started um, Mila, um, and then uh, also Wendy Teeter. So um, Mapping Indigenous LA um, is a project that were started by these folks and myself and uh, Natasha Sailua and Sammy, who was our uh, research assistant, uh, came on board and are now working on. And I think Lydia uh, was also part of the, the kind of uh, beginning of this project and sort of were the folks that kind of launched it um, to so um, so this is a sort of a continuation of, of the work that we're doing but I, I just want to share with you um, the the point here is that this is a com a combination of our activism as well as our research um, as well as uh, um, an example of our solidarity politics and coalition building. Um, through this project. So um, Mapping Indigenous LA um, is um, its goals here um, really is to sort of acknowledge and educate right, um, folks in the community, um, also to kind of create an understanding among Indigenous peoples. And, you know, one of the statistics that sort of launched this project was thinking about the city of Los Angeles has the highest uh, number of Indigenous communities um, within Los Angeles from, you know, South America, Central America, uh, the Pacific, um, from um, within Turtle Island and, and folks that have been um, that are in the area, but also been displaced from other areas that are now in you know, um, Los Angeles. So this is kind of where we're we're thinking about sort of mapping um, and, and accounting for these communities within our area. Um, and so uh, this is an ongoing project. So if you're also interested in in learning more about this and becoming a part of this, please reach out to us. Um, we're always looking for students students and, and students are so talented with technology and things nowadays. So, um, but really the, 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 if you get a chance to go onto the Mila website, 
Um, I think it's Mila, UCLA, Mila.org. Um, you can also check out in depth like the other previous um, mapping projects that we've done. Um, and this is also the brainchild of, of Craig Torres, who I mentioned um, earlier, one of our elders, um, who talks about mind mapping and sort of the whole idea of education. And I really love this. Um, this uh, visual that he provides for us to think about education beyond just the formal education system within a university or within a formal school, right? To the, the kind of broad intelligence and style of learning that a lot of us also um, learn within our own communities. And it's also indigenous knowledge, right? This is also about um, sort of recovering but also valuing um, our own forms of knowledge and, and education system so um, i just wanted to share this with you um, and this is also part of craig's ongoing uh, work with k through 12 um, grade levels in, a, in in kind of thinking about um, the combination of um, you know indigenous knowledge but also indigenous knowledge that um, counters a lot of the sort of dominant knowledge and and um, and resources that are out there in our K through 12 schools. And um, this is a beautiful, um, oh, sorry, a beautiful um, sort of mapping of the kind of work that Craig does and connects them to um, the, you know, to the environment, but also to the various, you know, food, anything from foods to plants to tea to the habitats. Um, and, and, and it's, and it's beautifully, he, he links how all these things are all interconnected and a part of us. So um, this is, you know, the other um, ongoing work that he's doing. Um, so in terms of my role uh, with EPIC, who is another community organization here called Empowering Pacific Islands Communities, um, Natasha Tasha and I and Sammy, who is an undergrad student at UCLA, um, we've been working on this Pacific Islands story maps and um, kind of thinking about how do we bring such a vast community of Pacific Islanders. Um, you know, the Pacific is comprised of over 10,000 communities, cultures, and languages, right? 10,000 plus. Um, and so how do we sort of, you know, bring that into representation of such a vast area? So these are the kinds of um, work that we've been thinking about using the U.S. Census as kind of our marker to uh, think about the communities here at UCLA and how um, we can also map in ways that represent each of these communities. So what we did was we went through the census and particularly with uh, Native Hawaiians, Samoans, Tongans, and Chamorros are the largest communities of Pacific Islanders here in Southern California. So what we did was we went to different community organizations that have been around since the 70s, um, uh, various community organizations varying from education, public health, um, sports, um, all sorts of things. And we we asked some of the elders there if they were willing to kind of share their knowledge and their work with us and what they've been doing around the census, but also more broadly for the community. So um, we conducted this all all throughout COVID, which uh, was sort of a, a, a weird blessing in a way because we could then have people dedicate the time to um, being interviewed over Zoom. We recorded, we trans, you know, we transcribed a lot of these interviews. And so hopefully when we're back in person again, which now I don't know when that'll happen, <laughs> um, we'll try to do a Talanoa session or sort of a coming together talk story session where we'll talk about these interviews and then um, think about how do we compromise our map. And so, um, you know, in closing, I just want to say that, you know, all of you have the capacity to be here. You belong here. You are a you know, you are at the right place. You have amazing people on your side. You can do anything. Of course, with anything you have to commit um, and you also have to have goals, right? To accomplish these goals as well as to um, ask those 
to help you. And so I just want to end with um, Haunani K. Trask, who is a Native Hawaiian uh, scholar who we recently lost last month. Um, and Haunani's work is very important, um, has been very informative to my work as a scholar um, and as a young Pacific Islander woman in thinking about decolonization, thinking about the valuing of our people, our land, um, and also just, you know, to, to sort of center why we do the work we do, right? We do this work because uh, because it's not just about us individually, it's about the collective, it's about advocating for our communities who are often left out in these conversations. And so, you know, hopefully um, in your capacity, right? And I wanna just highlight that, that people always think that all these kinds of social movements, you have to do all in one go. And I just wanna say that, you can also do things within your own individual capacity to make change, right? You don't have to wait for a big movement to do that. And I think, um, you know, as a graduate student, you can do things, you know, and I'll give you an example. For example, like some of my students, um, they do a lot of um, transcription things like for uh, YouTube, you know, videos that needs to be transcribed and closed caption, you know, those are little things that they've done. Um, but they've also organized and have like m mobilized and done work to where they advocated for salary raise, health insurance, things like that. So there's a vast of things you can do. And so my point here in closing is that, you know, you can be a lifelong learner as well as thinking about your work and the things that you can do for your community and um, and why it's important for you to, you know, pursue your education and pursue your passions. So I just want to end there. Um, thank you for the time. Thank you for sharing space. I hope you have a productive, constructive and um, informative workshop. Um, for today and tomorrow. So Fatai, and I'm gonna stop there. Thank you, Julianne. Do you have a few minutes for questions? Absolutely, absolutely. Are there any questions you can put in the chat or if you wanna unmute yourself? Hi, Dr. Anessi, I have a question um, in regarding, oh, it's Mai. Okay. Um, in regarding to the Pacific um, Island mapping, what were some um, what are some obstacles you were enduring dur during COVID time? Oh, yeah, no, that's a good one. That's a good question. So, um, and this is the thing about community work. You know, our folks, uh, we have a plan, we have things to do, but sometimes it doesn't work out. And so you have to be flexible to pivot and do something else. So yeah, so your question goes to that point. Um, we had uh, actually a very different um, uh, um, agenda of what we wanted to do we actually wanted to focus on very specific uh community organizations that have been around since the 70s um but of course with covid we couldn't do that and our plan was to go and meet people and interview them um in terms of you know how they navigated you know i mean a community org that's been around since the 70s is a big deal <laughs> so first off um you know you get co-opted people burn out you know you dissolve you know nobody wants to do it anymore <laughs> so um so that's where we were, we were at we were we were so amazed with several of the organizations that have been around since the 70s so that was kind of our original plan but when COVID hit we realized that um an interview wasn't the first thing on everybody's mind, right? Um, during COVID, and we totally get it. I mean, I I ended up my mother ended up getting stuck here, and so I ended up becoming um, proxy caretaker <laughs> for her, which I didn't anticipate. Um, you know, she so you know we have to shift, and that was I think the hardest part was for Tasha, Sammy, and I to come back together with Mashana, Wendy, and and Maylee to like. Oh, what do we do now that we're we we can't get to these orgs? And so we we rolled with it. I mean, we we um, said, well, why don't we just cast our net much broader and see if anybody in the in the community uh, is willing to talk to us? And we did, and that and that that's how we we got to 
interviewing. So we interviewed folks from the Chamorro community, uh, Native Hawaiian community. We interviewed a Kapuna, Kapuna Randy, who just so happened to be in town. <laughs> so we, you know, locked him down to interview him. He was just passing through and somebody, you know, this is total island style, like somebody word of mouth, like said, oh, Uncle Aunt Randy is here. Like Kapuna Randy is here for like three days. So of course we like scrambled and and um, and tracked him down. Um, we interviewed Auntie Lola, who did a lot of work around breast cancer um, initiatives and public health grants um, earlier in the 90s. Uh, we interviewed the Tongan folks from the Tongan community. Um, and we're hoping that uh, once we are back in person, we can finish our interviews with the Marshallese um, and the Chukis community, which um, are Micronesian communities in the Pacific that are in Orange County. So um, it really has been a kind of uh, role with it and chaos, organized chaos, I think is what I want to say. <laughs> um, jobs of, of trying to to work with folks. And I think the other part too that I had to, we had to keep reminding ourselves was, was we're in a pandemic. <laughs> People are dying. <laughs> interviewing and doing this project isn't that important right when people are are displaced are you know on the verge of being houseless when people are dealing with sick loved ones you know so this is another sort of care right this is another kind of example of care work that we also had to do for ourselves but also in terms of our community members that we're asking and we're asking and sort of asking knowledge from Right. So I think this is another great example of why, you know, more indigenous scholars need to do this work because, um, you know, we understand the precarity and the the the, the sensitivity, the sense the sensitive circumstances that our communities are in. Right. So. Um, you know, we, we, we just pivoted and we worked with some of the churches who um, wasn't in our <laughs> wasn't in our line of work, but, you know, we we just we were trying to be open minded and, and, and um, uh, share knowledge and share space and be transparent about what we were doing with everyone. So I think those are other very important values with doing research is transparency, as well as being flexible and open to to change um, within our own communities. So yes, thank you for that question. Thank you very much. Let's uh, thank uh, Dr. Uh, Anessi uh, for spending time with us. Thank you, it's always a pleasure to see you. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Thanks. Slide back up. We are going to break into a um, couple rooms now. So, um, Sophie, if you want to, already done. So, um, we have two rooms available. We have Gavin Begay here. Gavin, I saw your name here. Are you still here? Yeah, I'm here, Alfred. So Gavin has joined us. Gavin works in the admissions office. He's, uh, well, introduce yourself. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you, Alfred. Uh, hi, everybody. Thank you guys for having me. I hope you guys are uh, listening in and uh, kind of get these uh, jewels of knowledge that are being dropped today. It's awesome to be here, here and experience this. Uh, my name is Gavin Begay. I am Navajo and Mono from Central California. I'm an enrolled member of Cold Springs Indian Rancheria Band of Mono Indians. Um, so we're a small Indian reservation in uh, Toll House, California. But I am the Assistant Director for Native American Alaska Native Recruitment for UCLA's undergraduate admission. Thank you. And Gavin has agreed to go into a room and Anyone who is interested in talking with Gavin, learning uh, more about the admissions process, setting up future uh, opportunities to meet with him, et cetera, you are um, welcome to go into that room. For the others, um, you can either take a break and come back at 1245, or 
you can go into room two, which is a student discussions. We have Donnie, Ma'i, and several of our other um, students that'll be there, just an informal conversations about anything and everything. It's, it's pretty wide open. Um, so you can do one of those three things, or you can stay in this room. We'll have some music playing um, for you here and uh, also answer any questions. So uh, 12 to 12.45, and then at 12.45, we'll come back and have a uh, panel with Dr. Ambo and some students. Thank you.